Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today I'm excited to introduce you another Final Cut Pro X uh, plugin. This one's called Split Screen Light. Um, so first things first, after you've downloaded this from 40tv.com, it's going to come in a zip file. After you unzip that zip file, you'll see that we've created an installer now. Double click on the installer, Split Screen Light, and it's going to go ahead and launch the installer window. First things first, the welcome screen. Go ahead and click on continue. Afterwards, our software uh, license agreement. Go ahead and click on and continue. You have to click on agree. After so, it's going to tell you how much space it's going to take on your computer. You'll click install. It'll ask you for your password, for your username. I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel because I've already installed this on the computer. And uh, yeah, now that we've got that taken care of, let's go over the plugin. It feels like my brain must be mush because I can't tell you how many times I had to uh, retake or... Uh, do retakes as far as the video is concerned for split screen uh, plus so make sure you check out that video hopefully it's uh, very encompassing but uh, let's go over the options real quickly over here in our generators browser if you guys didn't have it open go ahead and click on this button right here scroll down until you see uh, 40 TV split screen light you'll see three generators available um, uh, on a side note split screen plus has 25 different generators it has the three here along with 25 other ones I'll go ahead and drag and drop one of these into my timeline. When I do so, it's going to ask me what I want to set my video properties for. This is because I don't, I haven't had a clip inside this timeline yet. You can set this to 1080p, 720p, or even standard definition. But a quick note, standard definition is going to look slightly different because these plugins were designed for widescreen formatting. Um, I'll select 720p to just to show a little more screen real estate here or a little better definition since we're recording at a smaller uh, uh, resolution for the screen capture. Next thing, uh, I can go ahead and minimize this here to show them all here. I gotta find some clips that I want to include into this uh, split screen uh, generator. I'll go ahead and drag down, uh, let's see, how about this one? Drag these two down into my timeline. I'll make sure they'll, they're dragged all the way over to frame zero so they match up. Uh, next thing we'll notice after I press Shift-Z on my keyboard is that they're not all the same length. Well, I want them to all play for the entire time, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink my generator to fit the shortest distance or the shortest length of the clip that I'm including in it. I'll do so uh, with the other clip as well. Selecting on this generator, I'll come back up here to the inspector, and uh, let's make a couple quick notes. Final Cut Pro uh, X 10.0.6 is a little buggy when it tr comes to drop zones. If my playhead is somewhere other than the beginning of this generator, and I include a clip, it's going to create a freeze frame from uh, the beginning of the clip until where my playhead is at. Let me show you an example. So if I come up to this drop zone and click here, I come to frame 0, select it, and click on apply clip clip if I come back to the beginning of my timeline and I press spacebar you'll notice that it's a freeze frame until my playhead actually uh, happened so you want to make sure you're at the beginning of this clip from my timeline I don't have any other clips on my timeline so for me it's going to be frame zero but if this was somewhere else in your timeline just make sure you're at the beginning of the generator itself I'll come back over here to the pro uh, inspector I'll remove it from the drop zone also another quick note these are images, so if you do not add a clip to one of the drop zones, so for example, let's say I just want my right drop zone to appear in my final render, I need to go over here and adjust the opacity down to zero for my left drop zone. That's just something to quickly note. Uh, next thing's next. Let's go ahead and click on the left frame here. I'll come over here to my timeline. I'll come over to frame zero of this clip, click on it, then select apply. Then I'll come back to my uh, generator uh, properties, click on the right frame, come back over here to the beginning of frame zero, click on it, oops, did I click on it? And then select apply. Now I'll notice if I go ahead and press spacebar, both of them are playing. You'll also notice that you're seeing some of that clip right here. I can select both of them, press V on my timeline to disable them, and then we'll notice that they're playing very nicely in the separated clips. I'll select this generator again so I can adjust some more properties. Right here, for each of the frames, I have position, scale, and opacity. The position is really the offset of the video um, or still within your clip. So I can move its offset from left to right here. I can move it in X and Y, 
we'll notice that because this is set up to fit um, the full height of my frame, that uh, bringing this up or down is going to introduce transparency. I can change that by scaling up. Alternatively, maybe I'm going for another look. I can scale this down. Um, I can also change its opacity. All of these things can be animated, of course. And uh, the right frame has all of the same parameters available to it. So I'm going to scale this back up to fill the full amount just so you can see what frame separation is. Frame separation is the separation between the two frames. Seems easy enough, right? So if I bring this down to zero, there's uh, no separation. And if I bring it up to 100, that's the full amount of separation for this particular generator. If I want, this uh, black area, for the separation is transparency. If I'd like it to be a solid color, I can click on this button right here. I can change the color to suit my project. Pretty cool. So I'll go ahead and close this out. Now that we've seen that, I'm going to show you one more example. I'm going to close or delete those clips from my timeline. I'm going to go ahead and bring in triangle 3. All right, let's set this one to 1080p. I'll click on OK. I'm going to bring in a clip that has audio. This halftone tutorial clip um, is a clip of me explaining the halftone plugin that I've designed available at 40tv.com slash shop. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. So first things first, I'll select on my generator. I'll move up to, let's say, the middle frame. I'll click on it. I'll come over here in my timeline, go to the beginning, and click on frame zero. Then I'll go ahead and click on apply. And it's applied this um, clip into the middle frame as selected here in the properties of the generator. One thing I'll notice that if I press V to disable the clip, I can allow uh, myself to see that frame separation. But what's going to happen when I press spacebar? No audio. So go back to the beginning. I'll right click on this clip and select detach audio. When I do so, I'll just select the audio and press V. So now the audio is selected, it's going to play in time. If I press spacebar, we can preview that. Pretty cool. Now if I didn't want this to render out uh, these images for these drop zones, I could drop their opacity and just maybe render out this uh, middle portion of the triangle. Alternatively, I could raise their opacities and throw something in there. So how about, I don't know, how about this one? Whoops, cancel. Working with a small amount of screen real estate, I'm not used to it. <laughs> So I'll drag this down over here. I'll go ahead and shorten this to the length of my other clips. I'll let go. I'll come back to the properties of my uh, generator. You got to make sure that you're at the beginning of uh, frame zero, otherwise, or the beginning of the clip. Otherwise, you're going to create a still frame, as we recall. I'll click on the left frame uh, drop well. I'll come over here. I'll select frame zero. I'll click on apply. After doing so, you'll notice it's applied it there. I can select it, press V on my keyboard to disable it, uh, the clip in the timeline. I'll select my generator again. I'll scroll down until I see the right frame. Alternatively, I can click on this, and I can come somewhere over here in my timeline, and I can click to add, uh, apply that portion of the clip to the generator, right? So that's an alternative method. By bringing it here it's in your timeline, you're checking your length and your distances of the clips. It just makes for easier organization. Just make sure you disable them after applying them, except for the audio, the audio you want to match up. So make sure it's the length of the generator itself. I'll click on the generator. I'll come back into the properties. If I want to change the amount of the separator, cool. Another cool thing about uh, the triangle one is we have an option called frame flip. If I click on this, it's going to uh, flip all the frames so they are orientated differently. I can turn on that colored background, maybe set it to green. Oh, where's a good green? <laughs> uh, there we go. Or we can take the 40 TV color green right there and drop it in. So there you go. If I press spacebar, we can see it playing. I hope you guys like this plugin. If you do, make sure you go to 40tv.com slash shop and check out the paid version of this plugin. It includes 25 generators with the same type of options you've seen in the light version and giving you more flexibility. 
Also, to go over a few other options such as dragging generators inside generators, make sure you see the pro version video of this on YouTube. It explains how to do that in that video. Again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the con uh, comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till next time, guys. 